Hi guys, welcome back to another video lecture. My name is Mr. Eddie. Uh, today's lecture topic is going to be on landform regions. Today we're going to study the seven landform regions in Canada. We're going to learn about a little bit about the uh, geologic history that's actually shaped those landform regions. We're also going to learn about some of the economic and human activity that takes place there, as well as a few other interesting facts. So, let's get started. Okay, to start the lecture, uh, what I'm going to do is actually uh, just uh, take it to class and uh, a lot of the times the students will ask me, sir, you know, what is a landform region? And my answer to that is uh, that a landform region is a part of the earth that has a unique set of physical features that human beings uh, use to meet their needs. So in Canada, they actually vary. Um, each of them is actually very distinct from all the others. And uh, we do have seven here in the country. Um, and they can really be divided up into three categories. Uh, the first is a highland, and that's more or less a mountainous region. Like if you look into the landscape, uh, you'll see that uh, the land appears to be elevated, uh, distinctly elevated. Uh, we also have lowlands, uh, which is more or less a low or flat lying area. Uh, and we have more than one of these in Canada. And uh, we have something called a shield, which is pretty much a combination of uh, both, uh, which is almost like a plateau uh, type of landscape. Uh, okay, so not quite a highland, not quite a lowland, uh, but somewhere in the middle. Okay, so we're going to start in Atlantic Canada with the Appalachian regions, uh, which is actually the oldest highland region in Canada at around 2.5 billion years old. Now, what's really unique about uh, Atlantic Canada and the Appalachians is uh, if you look closely at uh, the landscape itself, uh, although it's a highland, it doesn't have uh, you know mountainous regions with jagged peaks. Uh, instead, it has uh, almost like a rolling landscape, and that's because of erosion uh, that's taking place over billions and billions of years. And uh, because of that, uh, we have uh, that natural rolling landscape. Now. Um, you might ask about the formation, and uh, you might inquire about the formation, uh, like all, or most highland regions rather, not all, uh, but uh, the Appalachians are unique because they're actually uh, created by folding mountains, so the collision of both the North American and Pacific Plate, uh, creating uh, that uh, landscape. Uh, now in addition to that, uh, some of the economic activity that actually takes place there are things like fishing, uh, mining, and definitely uh, tourism as well. Okay, so the next landform region we're going to talk about is the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Lowlands, uh, a region that actually got its name uh, because of its location close to the Great Lakes uh, in southern Ontario. Uh, now, as far as the formation of the uh, Great Lakes St. Lawrence Lowlands, it's actually made up of sedimentary rock that's been uh, eroded over time, that's uh, been deposited from glaciation, that has uh, more or less ended up in the uh, region that we now know as the uh, Great Lakes St. Lawrence Lowlands. Um, in almost like a basin of Ontario. Uh, what's really interesting about uh, this location is uh, that actually two-thirds of the, our Canada's population actually resides there. So if you think about all the major cities that you might find uh, in this region, uh, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, uh, London, uh, pretty much everything within that golden horseshoe, uh, there's lots and lots and lots of people. Uh, so because of that, um, it's almost like the financial, um, you know, manufacturing uh, capital of Canada. Uh, so where you find a lot of people, you're going to find a lot of jobs. Um, and uh, one of the things that I do uh, teach the students is that uh, if you look at regions uh, like the Great Lakes, St. Lawrence, Lowlands, um, what's pretty unique about it is that uh, if you look at urbanization, uh, that's really what is uh, now taking over uh, southern Ontario. So, you know, if you were to take it back, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, um, you know, where we had a lot of agriculture and farming is now, you know, many houses and many uh, people building structures and things like that. Okay, so there's lots and lots of uh, highly dense, densely populated areas now, uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, open landscapes that we had a lot uh, before. Uh, it would be very difficult to talk about the Great Lakes St. Lawrence lowlands if I didn't include a uh, segment on uh, glaciation and uh, how glaciation has actually formed the region. Uh, so uh, just in a nutshell, uh, really glaciation ties in uh, because of the rock type and also because of the freshwater lakes that are actually consisted around the Great Lakes uh, that are actually uh, remnants from uh, more or less glacial meltwater. Uh, now to understand the, the formation of the rock type uh, is uh, kind of uh, tied into the rock cycle uh, and uh, if you've uh, looked at the rock cycle lecture you'll know that uh, sedimentary rock and lithification kind of go hand in hand and this is actually what you can see around this region. Um, now in addition to this the Great Lakes St. Lawrence lowlands are very very important to Canada uh, because it's the smallest uh, you know, uh, land from region, yes, uh, but it is also uh, the most densely populated and where you'll find a lot of the manufacturing and a lot of the jobs actually located in the country. Uh, this brings us to our next land from region of Canada, which is actually Canada's largest, uh, the Canadian Shield. And if you look closely at the Canadian Shield, it actually takes up a huge portion of Canada, actually wraps around Canada almost like a donut. 
Uh, now what's really important about uh, the Canadian Shield is that this is where you're going to find a lot of the mining that actually takes place in the country. And that's why it's actually known as the Metallic Mineral Storehouse of Canada. Uh, things like copper, nickel, gold, uh, even diamonds uh, you can find being mined in the Canadian Shield. Now in the Canadian Shield you can also find uh, both uh, igneous and metamorphic rock which is like strong resistant impervious rock uh, uh, that's typical in uh, that region. Uh, also I uh, you know, uh, we can talk about a little bit about the economy, uh, but like I said before, uh, mining uh, definitely is uh, probably the, uh, the biggest economic factor that takes place there, as well as some forestry and some hydroelectric electric, uh, energy as well. Like all land from regions in Canada, uh, as long as it's exposed to the environment, it will go through the erosion process. The Canadian Shield is no different in this respect. Uh, the two main rock types that you will find there are igneous and metamorphic rock. And some of the main industries that you will uh, find there also that drives the economy are things like forestry and mining. Uh, the next land from region we're going to look at is the Interior Plains. It's actually situated in the heartland of Canada. So uh, it will cover uh, provinces like Saskatchewan, parts of Alberta, also parts of Manitoba and uh, what's really important about this region is that it's the agricultural hub of Canada so a lot of the wheat that's actually harvested in the country uh, comes from that very location so if you like eating bread uh, that's pretty much uh, where the wheat came from uh, if it's been uh, harvested in Canada uh, and uh, it's one of the few places uh, in Canada where you'll actually uh, see a very very flat and open landscape uh, so if you look closely at the interior plains as well as far as the uh, geologic history it's actually been made out of sedimentary rock that uh, has been eroded from both the Western Carolina and uh, the Canadian Shield that's almost settled in that area. And uh, one of the very important things that uh, take place there, I like to teach the students about, is uh, the Calgary Stampede, rather, which is a uh, celebration almost of the Western culture that actually takes place uh, within that region. As we travel north in Canada, we're going to next stop in the Inuitian Mountains. Uh, the Inuitian Mountains uh, cover territories uh, such as Nunavut and the Northwest Territories. Uh, it's made primarily out of sedimentary rock. Uh, and uh, if you look closely at the mountain region, you can actually see that they're younger in geologic time. And they actually have been constructed uh, through folding mountains. Uh, and uh, what's really important about this region is that it's actually sparsely inhabited. Uh, that's mainly due to things like the temperature. Uh, you're going to find really, really cold winters there. Uh, the winters are going to last forever. Uh, very, very short summers. And you're not going to find a lot of human activity. Uh, actually, the only people that you're really going to find there are uh, people that are indigenous to Canada. Uh, so there isn't a great deal that uh, I actually cover uh, when it comes to the Inuitian Mountains. I talk a little bit about uh, some of the economic factors that are there. Uh, there is some mining, uh, but really uh, there isn't... Uh, a huge amount to focus on. The next land from region we're going to look at is the Hudson's Bay Arctic Lowlands, another sparsely populated region of Canada. Um, and if you look closely at a lot of the pictures that you might see uh, online of uh, this region, you'll actually see that a lot of the pictures look like it's almost like a wetland, and that's because it actually is. Uh, and what's really important about this region is that it actually con it's consisting of uh, three different rock types, uh, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rock. Now, some of the economic activity that actually uh, take place there are things like oil sand mines, uh, petroleum extraction, as well as diamonds as well. And, uh, you know, um, it's one of the uh, regions that I don't really spend a lot of time on uh, focusing on because there's not a lot of uh, human activity that takes place there. But one of the cool things that you might actually find there is a city called Churchill, Manitoba, uh, which is uh, one of the few places in the world where you uh, will get to see a polar bear. If there's any left, actually. <laughs> But uh, it's really cool. So you'll see the tundra buggy and the polar bear approaching it. Uh, one of the places that I'd love to see uh, just for, you know, that uh, reason alone. So it's uh, another uh, land from region that, uh, you know, I, I do like to include, uh, but there isn't a great amount of information that actually, you know, we, uh, we give the kids uh, in lecture in the classroom anyway. So our final stop on our uh, little tour of Canada uh, via land from regions uh, is going to be in the Western Cordillera. And uh, the Western Cordillera covers uh, Western Canada, as the name suggests, uh, covering places like British Columbia and the Yukon Territories, also parts of Alberta. Now this region is uh, very, very young in geologic time, so only made about 65 million years ago, uh, primarily made out of sedimentary rock and uh, folding rock, uh, but you also can find uh, igneous and uh, metamorphic rock there as well. Uh, what uh, would I like to add? Um, as far as the economic activity, uh, lots and lots of tourism. Uh, I actually got a chance to, uh, to visit uh, you know, BC myself. Uh, got to go to Vancouver, uh, probably the most beautiful place I've seen in Canada, <laughs> outside of East Hastings maybe. <laughs> but uh, also uh, you're going to find there, uh, there's lots of agriculture as well, and uh, also lots of uh, natural environments. So if you're into like scenic places, uh, definitely uh, the Western Cordillera is one of those places that you want to see. Um, I also uh, talk about the Olympics when I teach about this, uh, and I teach about... Uh, 
you know, why uh, the Olympics was actually held there in 2010, uh, because they needed a mountainous region for, uh, you know, uh, to conduct uh, various sports like downhill skiing. I'm sure you couldn't do that uh, in the interior plains, uh, much too flat. Uh, but that's uh, one of the things that I uh, kind of used to relate uh, the land from region uh, with economic activity and human use. Okay, so that is our seven land from regions in a nutshell. Uh, typically speaking, I uh, try to cover these seven land from regions after we do the rock cycle uh, because they tie in closely uh, to that information. Uh, now, uh, for uh, assignments, I typically give my kids like a research assignment uh, in the form of like a travel brochure where they have to talk about each uh, specific land from region uh, and talk about some of the characteristics as far as you know geologic formation, uh, human activity, and what uh, people actually use uh, the land form for uh, as far as for their own human needs. Uh, so that is uh, the lecture in a nutshell. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it and uh, there will be more videos to come. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please make sure that you drop a comment or a line and I will try to cover as much as I can. Until then, uh, see you guys soon.